attend the meeting to get to see some of the things, at least the information on the product, and also uh, how to get started with them. And then we're going to share something at the very end that uh, is an, excite, an exciting um, uh, inducement to do some business with uh, Sterling. So with that being said, um, wh wh who we have on the phone today is myself and Matt Ober Obermuller with Sterling. We're going to go through this product and have a uh, discussion on uh, why and how to use this product uh, for critical illness. Um, we've had good, uh, good attendance in our meetings, like I said earlier, and thought that we should get started with uh, getting the information out to the people that couldn't attend. So with that, Matt, if you would start the meeting, I would appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, and I appreciate it. And I um, want to say welcome to everybody on the line. Um, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to go over the Sterling Critical Illness product. And, um, you know, I know that uh, AIM has done a really good job at getting you guys pretty much up to speed on the need for critical illness, so we're not going to focus a lot on the need as much as we're going to focus on, uh, on the product itself and some of the unique features that Sterling offers. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to kind of go into the presentation. We'll talk about um, the product itself. We'll also uh, go over the e-enroll application uh, process, and I'll kind of do a live demonstration, hopefully, on that as well. And then we'll kind of wrap up with some Q&A if there is some Q&A. Uh, a little bit about Sterling. You'll see the first page here. For those of you that may or may not be familiar with our organization, we were established in 1958. Our corporate offices are in Bellingham, Washington. And then recently, uh, just a year ago, we were uh, bought by WellCare. They're out of Tampa, Florida. Uh, some of you may be familiar with them. They're primarily in the Medicare Advantage space. So we're owned now by, by WellCare. Um, as we get into the product itself, um, I'm going to go over some of the unique features of Sterling. And uh, for those of you that, that are familiar with, with this product or these types of products, I'm going to also talk about the differentiators between us and some other of the competition. Uh, first thing, why is it great for you? Uh, Sterling and AIM, we offer a very competitive compensation, which we're going to go through uh, at some point with you guys to uh, go over that. If you guys have questions, we'll certainly be able to answer those questions. Um, there's a Sterling e-enroll process, which I'm going to explain uh, in greater detail here, but it's been a very, uh, it's, our agents love it on the captive side. Number three, the face value up to $70,000. That's pretty unique in the industry. Most of the products that, that we see go up to like $50,000 at the most. Um, ours goes up to $70,000. There's a few other folks that do that, but ours is um, right up there with them at $70,000. Uh, while we're on that, I will highlight this, that when it comes to critical illness plans, the old critical illness plans usually were paid on a schedule of benefits, meaning that if you needed surgery, you would get a certain amount for that. If you had a hospital stay, you'd get a certain amount paid for that, um, and so forth and so on. If you needed some sort of treatment, radiation, or durable medical equipment, every line item, you got paid a specific amount for that. What, what our plans do is our plans pay a specific specific value based upon the face amount of the policy. So ours goes up to $70,000, meaning upon diagnosis of a critical illness, we're writing a person a check for the full face amount of the policy, regardless of whether they've um, had surgery, regardless of the, of the type of treatment they desire, uh, we're giving them a big lump sum of cash. So that's, um, that's something that's, that's different. That's different than the older policies out there, which are paid on a schedule of benefits. I'll continue with number four. We have an issue age up to 84. Uh, that's pretty unique in the industry. Most of the uh, plans out there stop at age 69. Ours goes up to age 84. Number five, a 20-year paid-up rider. Uh, so within 20 years, it's a, it's a 20 pay. When you're, when you're done paying for it in 20 years, um, the policy stays in force, and your premiums just stop. Uh, number six, 24 different plan options. I won't go into great detail on that, but I think you guys will get the gist of it as we continue to talk about this, but I'll, um, I'll kind of go over some of those a little bit later. Number seven, uh, ours has an individual, a spouse, and a family coverage. Now, this is something that is uh, fairly uh, 
differentiating for us in that most plans out there, they're individual policies, meaning that you buy them on yourself. Uh, if you're diagnosed, you get the money and you're, and you're done. Our policies, you can have the individual, but we also include the individual and the spouse, and we also include family coverage. So if there's children that are involved, whether it's a single parent family or a uh, dual parent family, uh, the children are all covered at one price, uh, regardless of how many children are on there. And we'll get into to that coverage a little bit later, too. <clears throat> Number eight, large target market. Uh, you'll see that a little bit later here when I talk about the age range. Uh, number nine, average three-day turnaround time for underwriting. This is all done in-house uh, at our corporate office. It's our product. So the turnaround times have been have been really good. Like I said, average three-day turnaround time. Um, most of the time, if we get a clean app, you know, it's going to be within that time frame, uh, three to five uh, business days. You know, 88% of our applications are processed within three to five business days. <clears throat> and then as Dave mentioned, number 10 there, there's a jump start bonus. <clears throat> and that's going to, we're going to talk about that at the end of the presentation. So let's get into the product a little bit more. <clears throat> the age range, age 18 to 84. So this, this product actually, you know, go, carries a very wide range of, of uh, ages. Um, like I said, that makes us pretty unique in the industry. That's a pretty big selling opportunity. The second bullet there, three plan options. There's either <clears throat> cancer only, or there's critical condition only, or there's a combination plan. Now, here's why that's different. There are individual standalone cancer plans in the market. And there are individual standalone critical condition plans in the market, but the critical condition plans usually encompass cancer, meaning that if you have a critical policy that has cancer in it, once you get one of those illnesses, the policy terminates. With ours, that third bullet there, the combination plan, actually gives the person the cancer and the critical only plan. So as an example, if they bought a $30,000 combination plan, and they got cancer, we would pay them $30,000 upon diagnosis for a major cancer. And the critical illness portion of it would still stay in effect. And if they later had a heart attack, they would get another $30,000. So that's what the combination plan does. And that's, again, it's pretty unique in our industry to have that. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit later about how our agents are positioning that. but. Um, but just want to give you the framework of that, how that plan works. The third bullet there, lump sum levels. There's two different choices. Gold is pretty much standard in the industry where uh, the lump sum payouts, um, pay, it pays out lump sum of the face value of the policy, except once you get to age 69, uh, or excuse me, once you get to age 70, it will uh, reduce in half. The benefits will reduce in half. So that's pretty standard in the industry. What we've done as a company is if we've, we've given a platinum option. And the platinum option for just a little bit more uh, premium per month, and it's really not, not significant, uh, the benefits do not reduce at the age of 70. What we found is people wanted the choice to have their benefits reduce or not reduce. And with our plan, we give them that choice. And a lot of other plans, they don't have that choice. It just automatically reduces at 50% when they turn age 70. So that's Matt, something that's different. And, and Matt, let me interrupt here just real yep. quick. Like, um, for the people that are listening to this, we carry a lot of other carriers for critical illness, critical care products. And uh, this is one of the reasons why we brought on the Sterling product is, is because of the uniqueness of this plan and how they set their plans up is a lot more liberal and a lot more flexibility on what you can do for your clients. You're able to do a cancer only, or do a combination uh, of it, or a critical uh, a critical condition only deal. The reason for doing that is various reasons. One, that someone may have already had cancer and couldn't uh, get a cancer plan because of having it, or their their interest is only obtaining a cancer plan or a critical condition only plan. And what you're able to do with that is is be able to be flexible enough to stay in within a budget for the clients and make it really affordable. If you want to go the combination, 
could cover all the different uh, conditions, and Matt will get into the different conditions that are covered. But also on this is Matt, uh, and I like to emphasize certain things, is Matt uh, is absolutely correct. Most of the plans out there uh, either go away at 65 or reduce their benefits in half in the critical illness uh, arena. There are a couple that do go further than that, but most of them do go away with that. So we're a big advocate for selling that platinum plan that a person that takes out this, this plan can continue their benefits well beyond 65 and have that. And it, as Matt stated, is there isn't a big jump up in premium. And we'll probably, if we get the time, be able to show you that. But uh, if not, I'll sh we'll tell you how to get the rates and you can check it out for yourself. Matt, go right back. Okay, thanks, Dave. And now is a pretty good time, I guess, to talk about those um, the difference between the plan options, just to kind of give you guys a, a framework of it. Um, our agents, 90% of the policies we sell are going to be uh, cancer only or critical condition only. And here's why. The combination plan, if a person buys a combination plan, they're going to pay a little bit more in premium. Uh, but once the cancer or the uh, one of the critical conditions is diagnosed, they will get their money, but they will continue to pay that same premium on the combination for the length of the, of the policy until the other half of the terms. So what our agents have done is they sell two individual policies. It's a little bit more in, in premium per month, like you know a few dollars a month. But once they get the one condition, whether it's cancer or whether it's one of the critical conditions, that policy then terminates and they stop paying the premium on that half of the policy. So most of our agents are selling them individually, but there is the, the combination available as well. So just going to give you the, the uh, little bit behind the curtain there on what our agents have figured out. So the uh, next slide here, yeah, there are 11 covered conditions. We will go through that. Um, there is also, as I mentioned, individual spouse and family coverage options. They are the the coverages are available in ten thousand dollar increments from ten thousand up to seventy thousand dollars. The twenty year paid up rider is good for people up until the age of sixty nine. If they turn seventy, they no longer have the option to get the twenty year paid up rider, and it is uh, guaranteed renewable. So, a couple of things that we've done is we put a packet together, and I will kind of high level this a little bit, but we put a packet together. That, um, that AIM has available and you can order, I think you can get them through AIM and we'll, we'll make those more available as well, Dave, if there's uh, people that need them. But included in this, there is a, uh, an agent guide which has, it's, it's basically um, our agent's Bible to the product. It has all the information from uh, the, the covered conditions to uh, uh, market research, market information. It has some underwriting material in there. It talks about how to process applications. It, uh, it really runs the gamut on this product itself. There's also a product brochure. The product brochure is what you're looking at right now, which is just a, uh, a two-page fold-out brochure that talks about um, high level on the product, and it's really what our agents use from a selling standpoint. There's also, um, in that same marketing material packet, there's um, underwriting guidelines that talk about uh, various different knockout conditions, knockout drugs, things of that nature. And then there's also, um, there's also it, the various different material on the e-enroll as well as the, um, the Sterling Navigator, which is a website that um, all of the independent agents have an option to go to. So that's part of this packet. Um, and again, they'll be made available to you if, uh, if you need one of those, and, and we'll certainly get one of those out to you. Hey, Matt, can you go back one slide, please? Yeah. Uh, this one? Right there, yep. Okay. I, again, I like to point out specific things that I know that has really uh, made a difference out there, especially with the Sterling plan, is it very unique to have a 20-paid up rider. 
and if you if you put your marketing hat on right now and think about it is there's a lot of people out there with various products out there that they're they're looking into or or maybe involved in and that type of thing and they're all concerned about uh, either rate increases or how to budget for them and those types of things I'm just trying to make sure that you understand that the, this option would be very, very attractive to a lot of people in the right age factor that they can see an end to their premiums and be more secure about having a, a place that they know how much out of pocket it's going to be to them. So I think this 20 paid option is going to be uh, utilized quite a bit. And I don't have another carrier with all the carriers that we have that they, they gives this option out there to be done paying for it in 20 years. So take advantage of that. Look at that option. I think you'll get a lot of mileage with it if you present it properly. Go ahead, Matt. Okay, thank you, Dave. And we're going to go through and, and hopefully use this e-enroll process right now and show you guys um, somehow that works and I'll, I'll be able to do a demonstration but in this presentation I'm going to give you guys a link um, uh, during this presentation probably in about five or six slides here and that link is going to have the the address in which you can log on to the e-enroll process right now and actually get to the quoting tool and fill out live applications and, and the reason I said that is it is a live uh, system now You'll have to have an agent ID in order to submit any business, but it, it's a live system. But our our agents during the process have gone through this, and they load this, uh, uh, they write it down, and then they, they go online, and they look at it, and it's a really uh, neat quoting tool. So I'm going to give you guys the address here in a second, and then I uh, just want to prepare you to write that down. So e-enroll is our preferred method of submitting applications. It's all electronic. It's real easy. Our agents absolutely love it. Um, the underwriting, there's a couple of underwriting questions that we'll get to, and I'll show you a brief demonstration of it. Uh, cancer, if they're uh, cancer only, they just have to answer question three. Critical condition is four and five, and then the combo would be three, four, and five when it comes to the underwriting questions. Let me show you a couple of screenshots. So the first screen here is the rate calculator. And again, I'm going to go through a demonstration of this, hopefully here in a second, if uh, the system works, um, meaning if I can toggle between it. Um, but this, this screen, I can select the state I'm in, the plan I want, the type of coverage I'm looking for, uh, individual, family, uh, individual spouse, things like that. I get to the age of the primary and then the age of the spouse if I'm doing a spousal coverage. Then I go down to the coverage level at the bottom. Coverage level is going to be, uh, you know, ten thousand to seventy thousand uh, dollars, or excuse me, the coverage level is going to be gold or platinum. The payout option is going to be the ten to seventy thousand dollars, and then I can select optional riders there. Once I hit next, it takes me to the premium summary screen. That premium summary screen indicates what. The, the payment would be both monthly at the very bottom, semi-annually or annually. It also breaks it down right above that to the primary insured, the spouse, and the child, and how much premium is actually in each one of those. So that's the next phase there. Once I quote the person, they accept. We get into the next screen, which is the applicant information. So we'd fill out the person's name, Social Security, date of birth, uh, fill out all of their, their height and weight, their address, city, state. From there, we go on to the underwriting. So here's where the underwriting, we would ask them various different questions. And what our agents typically do here is we turn the screen to the customer and just let them read those conditions because they can read a lot faster than we can talk usually. And we just ask them if they have any of those conditions. You'll notice on the second section there, it says within the past five years. So what we do is we do a five-year look back. If a person has been, uh, uh, if a person had a diagnosis seven years ago, six years ago, and they're not doing any more treatment, uh, they're not taking any medication for their condition, and they're 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 free and clear, uh, we will we will underwrite them again. So it's a five-year look back. Once we get past the underwriting, the next screen is the billing options. 
where we can select whether they want to do automatic premium draft, credit card, or direct bill. And again, monthly, uh, semi-annually, or annually, depending on, on the billing process. And then we do a, a, a real quick, this is where the customer signs the application. So they would sign the application there. Once they sign it, the agent puts their agent code in there. And uh, on the notes field, what we've been asking the AIM representatives to do is to just write in there priority processing uh, with AIM. And that indicates to us at Sterling that we're going to put you guys in the top of the queue as far as underwriting goes. So, so that's that. Here's the e-enroll website that I mentioned. So if you guys want to take a second there, uh, if you have a pen or pencil and write that down, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to make sure that you put the S in there for the secured site, and it's eenroll.sterlinginsurance.com. So I'll go ahead and leave that up for a second uh, just to get you guys to, uh, for those of you that want to write that down. And then what I'm going to do right now, Dave, is I'm going to try to go into uh, a live demonstration. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. Let's see if I can get this done here. All right. So what I'm in, can you guys, can everybody see this screen I'm in right now? Yes. Okay, good. So what I'm in, I'm actually in the live application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my cursor down and I'm going to select the state of Washington. I'm going to select, for right now, I'm going to select the combo plan just for illustration purposes. I will go uh, individual. We'll do a, let's just say, a, uh, we'll go 55 years old, male, no nicotine. We asked nicotine because chewing tobacco would be nicotine. Uh, coverage level, let's go $70,000, platinum, and a 20-year paid up. If I hit the next screen on the bottom, now you can see what kind of premium we're looking at there. So, uh, Dave, I think this is where when we were doing the sessions, uh, you know, a lot of people were looking at this and thinking, boy, if, if I had a person who uh, perhaps didn't qualify for long-term care or something along those lines because of the strict underwriting, this is where a 55-year-old can get $70,000 of coverage for $207. That's including the 20-year paid-up rider. If you look at the top or uh, the middle section, you can see what the premium amount is for the policy, and then you can also see how much that 20-year paid-up costs them. It only costs them $448 a year for that 20-year paid-up rider. So what we've done is this tool, if I want to go back for a second, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the back button. If I want to do a requote and say, well, how much would just cancer be? So if I do just the cancer plan with the same person, same everything, it takes that premium now from 207 on the combo plan to 126.88 for just the cancer only plan. If I want to go back and do just the critical portion of it to see what that would cost. I go change it to critical, I go down, hit the next button, that brings it down to $82. So you can see that the combo was 207, the cancer was 126, and the critical was 82. So the, the, the two individual are like a dollar or two more per month than if we did the combo, but our agents have figured out that doing a two individuals, if the policy terminated, you know, upon one condition, that premium would then stop and they would just continue paying the other premium. So our agents have gone into that mode, uh, and as you can see there, it's a, it's a just a, it seems like a better deal for the customer. I'm going to go back real quick, and I'm going to show you a real, uh, another demo, or another example. If I'm talking to an underage person, when I say underage, a, 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 a younger family, two-parent family, and let's just say that the primary's age is going to be 40 and that the uh, spouse 
is going to be, say, 36, and neither one of them are nicotine users, and let's just go with a real simple $20,000 policy, platinum with a 20-year paid up. Now, this is for a, a younger family who perhaps has major medical, but they have a high deductible, and this would fill in those gaps upon one of these critical illnesses if they were diagnosed. If you look at the premium there, we have a husband in this example that has $20,000 of coverage. The spouse will actually have half of what the uh, primary has, which would be $10,000, and each child will have $10,000 of coverage. Regardless of whether they have one child or five or ten children, they each get $10,000 of coverage, and that premium is only $20.47 in this example. So this is something that's very affordable for uh, young families to have to fill that gap between uh, what they have for major medical. And um, Dave, do you have any other things you'd like me to show on this rate calculator or not? No, I don't think because they've seen the the further screens there that you showed on the screenshots. But just I want everyone to keep in mind, this is one of the reasons why we also uh, made a decision with the Sterling is, is these premiums that you're seeing are very, very affordable. When you look at other plans, we did an analysis with other plans, and we saw that these premiums really do – uh, stand out there where they're affordable. Like uh, Matt illustrated here, if you've got people now looking at those bronze plans out there with this affordable health, there's a lot of out-of-pocket costs, there's big deductibles, and for 20 bucks, you're pretty much covering a whole family on those deductibles if they have a critical condition or have a uh, cancer situation, something along those lines. Think of all the additional sales that you will be able to get with a product like this that fills the gaps between long-term care gaps, between health insurance gaps, between uh, DI, and all the other marketplaces out there that you might be able to fill a gap in on their coverage and how affordable it is to do so. So we're really excited about this because of what this will do and, and give you the tools to, to get additional sales. And I, all you need to do is get started with this, and you'll, it'll start happening for you. Go ahead. Yep. yep. Okay. Thanks, Dave. So the next, the, the next slide, I'm just going to talk about from an underwriting standpoint. What we've done is we, do, we basically do an Rx check. We do an Rx check on every customer that comes through. Anybody that's over the – or that – has a $50,000 or more of coverage, we'll usually do a phone interview, but that's it. The only reason that we would ever do a phone interview um, after we've done an RX check for you know a, a smaller policy is if something came back in the RX check that had, um, if they were taking a couple of different kinds of medications and we weren't really sure what they were taking one of the medications for, um, our underwriters might make a phone call on that just to verify. But by and large, we do an RX check, and that's that pretty much does our underwriting for us. There is no, uh, there's no phone interview. Uh, we don't do a cognitive interview. We don't do run an MIB. Uh, we don't send somebody out there to do a physical or draw blood. It is very simple issue as far as uh, we just run an RX check. So we take their Social Security, run it against what drugs they're taking, and that's how we underwrite. As far as the summary goes, what I'm going to do um, uh, is I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about this fast start bonus. Do you want me to talk about it, Dave, or do you want to talk about it? Actually, Matt, uh, l let me uh, go over this. We decided to do this in uh, our meetings that we just did through Washington and Oregon, and it was actually only available for people that uh, showed up for these meetings. but. After uh, getting such a good response, and we we're hoping that uh, maybe there's some people that actually went to those meetings that are getting uh, uh, back up to date on this call, but we want to also offer it to you if you didn't make that meeting. So basically what we're doing here is your first sale with uh, Sterling on this critical illness. We're going to give you $100 for your first sale on it. 
Then if you get to two more sales after that for a total of three sales, we give you an additional 300 So a total of $400 for three sales on the critical illness. Now, the, the whole uh, logic behind doing this is, is getting someone to get started with sterling and uh, also to uh, get comfortable. If you write one, certainly uh, that's good. But when you've written more than one, maybe two, two to three sales, now it becomes more of a habit, more of a comfort zone for you. And all these years of doing this uh, type of insurance marketing, we understand that once you be comfortable with it, you use it on a regular basis. So we're just trying to get you a, a way to get comfortable with this product and, and, and use the product. Now, here's the, the deal is if you contract with us at, at AIM in the next two weeks of uh, attending this, this webinar, and this will go till March 31st, you're eligible for this. Uh, you wouldn't have been uh, unless you went to the meeting, but since you did the webinar in the next two weeks, if you uh, contract, you'll be eligible for this bonus. Matt? The last part, Dave, is, is really just how we, we contract. So what um, what happens is, um, a, I believe, Dave, you guys will send them a link. Is that correct? Yes. What I'd like to do is, uh, if you're not already contracted and you're on this webinar, is to send me an email, and I will have a link uh, to go on. Um, uh, Sterling uses a program called No More Forms to Contract. And so what will happen is Kathy and our licensing department will uh, send you a link that all you do is click on the link and uh, it takes you to No More Forms. You get on No More Forms, fill out the information, and then the contracting process happens with Sterling. Yep. And uh, as far as the No More Forms go, uh, it literally will take about 10 minutes. And, and I've heard 5 to 10 minutes, but I'm going to go on the high side. 10 minutes to fill out the, the uh, online application. Once you do that and submit it, uh, we usually turn around those within five to seven business days and get everything contracted. The biggest hang up is we need the uh, we need to have the E and O insurance document attached. So you need to have your E and O insurance document attached as part of the application process, and will cause delays is when somebody will show the E&O uh, document, but it's perhaps not for them as much as it's for a business, and we need to see that it's for the actual individual. But that's the only thing that causes uh, any sort of delay is when that E&O document is not uploaded properly. So just be aware that, that that's a document that needs to be a part of this process too. But other than that, it takes 10 minutes to go through the process, and then uh, usually within five to seven business days, uh, it's turned around and ready to go. If anyone has an issue or uh, has uh, a challenge with any of that process, just pick up the phone, call us here at the office. Either uh, Most likely Kathy will, will be able to help you with it, but if she's not available, one of the marketers will get you uh, and will get you through that. Okay, and I think that's the end of the presentation. Dave, if there's um, any questions out there, we can certainly field some of those questions at this time or we'll proceed how, how you see fit. Well, yeah, uh, one comment that I do want to say is after seeing this program, you know, the things I pointed out I think will be a big advantage for you guys to sell critical illness. If you uh, uh, are going to send me an email and want uh, further information on this and the link, send it to Dave, David, let's go with David, dot Wayne. Last name is spelled W-A-N-E at yaim.com. So it's david.wayne at w-h-y-a-i-m.com. Send me an email. I will uh, have a link sent to you, and we'll get you, once you get contracted, you'll get a, that kit that uh, Matt was talking about. Um, Dave Whalen, I hope you're still on the phone. If you can unmute phones and see if we got any questions. I have already done so, Dave, and nope. the lines are open. Okay, so this, this is a great chance. If you have any questions on what you heard, uh, please ask away.
Hey, Dave. I have a question. Um, go right ahead, someone. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. Yeah, Tom. Tom, Tom. Hi, Dave. Say, I was wondering, on that 20-year paid-up option, does that fix the premium then so there wouldn't be any rate increases over that period of time? That's correct. Uh, Matt, do you want to answer anything on that? Yeah. Yeah, the way, the way that um, we don't usually, and I, I can't imagine a case where we would ever raise the rates if uh, on a book of business. If, if what we would normally do is we would close the book of business that we have, so, which would keep those rates fixed, and we'd open up a new one if we were ever going to do a rate increase. I know that uh, for those of you that are in the long-term care space, you probably uh, have a little, a little anxiety over that, but ours, our rates don't increase. And In fact, when we opened up this new book of business, the rates actually went down. So that's a steady rate that that person is going to have. It's going to be a fixed rate unless we raise the rate on every on the whole book, which we just don't anticipate doing. And the reason is, is we have we're selling a fixed risk. We know how much money we're at risk for, and we know what the propensity of the conditions are. So it's very well known. There is no cost of living associated with it. It's the we know that we're going to pay out a bucket of money. So. Uh, it's a lot more easier to it's a little bit easier to predict than long term care, so we don't anticipate any rate increases. Also, on well, that, uh, just so everyone knows that that twenty pay once uh, you hit that twentieth year, there are no more premiums. Uh, it is a closed book, uh, even though the the uh, the policy is still good. They will not pay any additional premiums. Well, that's a good selling point then, because it guarantees the rate in a way, basically, and. Uh, they have a, a, a guarantee for the rest of their life then. Yeah, Tom, you know, uh, in this marketplace, as we've experienced with long-term care and some other uh, uh, products, it is a big issue out there, and it weighs pretty heavy on people's minds. So being able to say, hey, you've got an end to your premiums, and look at how stable this product is. It is it's got fixed cost on it. They know exactly what they have. Are you tired of having rate increases? Here's a product that, that isn't exposed to rate increases like uh, the products you've maybe had experienced with. Yeah, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have a question? Yes, John here. I have a question. Uh, what is the indemnity option? Right now, the indemnity option is something that we're not, uh, we're, we're probably going to put back into place, but that is where we would pay people uh, on, based upon um, what they what services they receive, so it would be an option they'd have as a writer, and they would get a lump sum, but they'd also get uh, paid out if they had surgery. They get a certain amount. If they needed durable medical equipment, they'd get a certain amount. They would pay for health screenings and such. Right now, that's not part of the product anymore. Um, we pulled it. Okay, uh, so I thought an indemnity option would be. Was your lump sum where if you were diagnosed with cancer or a stroke or whatever, you got the lump sum and that would be an indemnity? Yeah, and I, I hear what you're saying on that, and that is typically how it's it's perceived in the interview. Ours are lump sum anyhow, so they're by definition that's what it is. It's a lump sum policy. We put an indemnity rider on there for other services, but we we had to refile with some states, so we pulled it out and we're going to put it back in, but it's not going to come until probably later this year. Okay, next question. Um, children's rider. Somebody buys a children's rider. How long is that good for children? If you Does it drop off at a certain age of the children, or do uh, could you keep it on there as long as you wanted to pay the premium? Great okay. question. So what happens is that goes good until the, ch until the child turns 27 years old, once they turn 27, if they wanted to convert and get their own policy, they'd have guaranteed issue and we would give them their own policy and they'd start to pay for it themselves. Um, otherwise, they would drop off. Okay. And the premium would drop off, obviously. Correct. Well, so yes and no. Uh, that one premium covers all children on the family. So if one person turned 27, that person would drop off, but the premium is still going to be the same as long as there's a child on that plan. Right. No. Got that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? How about, about the older guys, group? Uh, let me let me just say I don't know if you guys saw the premium on the child, but it was it was like two dollars a month. 
just to, as a point of reference, I think. Someone got cut off. They did have a question. Yeah, how, how about uh, ages 70 and up? So, uh, go ahead, Matt. Well, ask, ask me a little bit more about that question. I, I don't know where you're going with it. The, what, what exactly are you asking? Um, Qualify for insurance? Uh, I guess I'm asking if it's still good at that in those ages. Is that so, a good yes. product to bring to the elder crowd? Yes. So we write, we write up until the age of 84. Um, however, what happens is after they turn 70, they don't have the option to get a $70,000 plan. They have an option to get a $30,000 plan. But we do write up to $30,000 lump sum on people that are over the age of 70 up to the age of 84. You mean through the age of 84? Okay, thanks. What's the commission on these? Dave, you want to talk about sure. that, or do you want um, to talk? It varies in the state that you're on because there's a loss ratio on there. So what I would like to do is just send you guys uh, the actual commission rate sheet. So send me an email, and I will will send you that commission rate because if you're in Oregon or in, in Idaho or in Washington, it's going to be a different rate. So I don't want to get confused on the phone uh, with the different audience that we have. So send me an email and I'll send you a commission schedule so you can see it. And then uh, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. And I did hear someone make uh, a comment in there. It, she's absolutely correct, through the age of 84. So it, it will, they'll sell up to age 84. As long as they're still 84, they can buy a policy. When the policy would pay off, say, on a cancer diagnosis, you said significant cancer or something, what would be a minor cancer where it would not pay off? So carcinoma in situ is where the cancer is still contained within the cells and it hasn't metastasized out. The way our policy pays is, if somebody has carcinoma in situ, um, they, the, normally that they'll go in and they'll remove that pocket of cancer, but it hasn't metastasized out, so it's a simple surgery. Um, and I say normally, I'm not talking about absolutes here. Um, then our policy pays 10% of the face value, and the other 90% remains in place for um, a, a very you know, a serious cancer that's actually you know, metastasized out of the cells. Okay, another scenario, a melanoma on a person's back that, again, was just removed, but it was a melanoma. Okay. Are you, are you saying is it, are they being able to get underwritten? Is that what you're asking? Are they able to get underwritten? And if they were underwritten, um, what would that pay if they were diagnosed again with a melanoma? Yeah, so skin cancer, skin cancer is not something that we will pay on. So that's that. There's that answer. As far as the underwriting goes, um, I will have to get back to you on that. I don't. I, I believe that if you've had melanoma, um, I, I believe that that's a knockout. But I'll have to verify that and get back to you guys. So if, if you had a melanoma and it was skin cancer, it wouldn't qualify you to receive benefits. But if you've had a melanoma and it was skin cancer, it knocks you out from even qualifying for insurance. I think that sounds John like a. John, I think what yeah. happens is if it's been within the last five years, you would not be eligible for the insurance. But if it's been over five years, um, and I'm not 100% sure on this, John. I think that's who's asking this question. Um, yes, it is. Okay. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And just for the people that are on the phone, one of the uh, next, uh, maybe it may not be the very next one, but I do plan on doing a, a, a another webinar with Sterling. I'm actually going to have a series of them. We'll go into marketplace and places where you can sell it and how to go about selling it. But I, I am planning on having an underwriter on one of the calls so that we can get more specific on it. And I think I might move it up uh, in so that we do understand where we can use it and where we can't use it and more specific uh, questions on underwriting. But Matt, if you would uh, uh, find out that, and I can send an email out to the people that attend so, and answer that question exactly so what, correct. What it is is this. It is if you've had melanoma uh, within the last five years, it won't, you will, we will not be able to underwrite you. Um, 
but if it's been past five years, then then we would. And to answer your, the other question, is you're right. If a person does get melanoma, it's not it doesn't pay as part of the plan, and that's very very common in the industry. People just don't pay for melanoma, so it's a it's it's not unique to sterling. It's very common in the industry for these plans. Also, uh, one more comment is if you got melanoma or, or skin cancer, speaking of skin cancer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you were saying melanoma because I mean you could have a melanoma in your lungs and it's lung cancer. Yeah, that's a, that's a, skin cancer is what do, doesn't get paid under skin, this. Policy. Okay, okay. Skin cancer so, doesn't get paid, but a melanoma, other than on the skin, would get paid. Absolutely. And uh, just remember this, everybody, if you have a unique situation out there that there isn't something that isn't being covered under this policy or doesn't work uh, because of underwriting or something like that, again, AIM's got several carriers that we can look at and maybe uh, cover the issue that you have with that client. So it's not the only uh, avenue that we have. I just think it's one of the best avenues we have with the pricing, with the 20 pays, with going all the way up to the higher ages. It is one of our very best offerings we have here at AIM, and I think you guys will see the same thing. Any other questions out there? So if there's no more questions, just keep in, uh, your eyes out for another webinar. Like I said, I'm going to have an underwriter hopefully join us in one of them, and then we'll also uh, do some marketing on where to sell it, how to sell it in different marketplaces. Uh, Matt, I want to thank you very much for your participation in this, and uh, please send me an email if you want that link sent to you. And uh, if you need a commission schedule or anything else, send me an email, and I'll make sure I get it to you. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon.